I used to take photos like these, but after I started to use the techniques in this video, my photos started looking like this. But together, we need to talk about some concepts. The techniques are not that complicated. They are based on some aspects, such as the locations, the framing, the amplitude of the frame, the time of day, the walk-around technique, and even some tips for night photography. With all these tips, you'll be ready to take amazing photos, whether to post on social media, sell your car, or even become a professional photographer. All you need is a bit of practice, and you're soon gonna be taking wonderful pictures. Let's start from the basics and advance through the video. First, the simplest and most important, choose an interesting place to take the photo. If you stop the car in a parking lot to take the picture, it'll look like a car in a parking lot. Instead, go to an interesting location to shoot your car. Go to a beach, stop by the side of a canyon, in front of a castle, in a forest clearing, or even on a frozen lake. Your creativity is your best friend. For me, there's nothing better than taking pictures with flowerful trees. I believe that a good photo is one that makes the viewer have a good, positive feeling. But as a photo is always a cutout of the scene, the viewer can often feel confined. For that not to happen, it is usually good to leave a small margin on the sides of the image. In addition, the rule of thirds can help because when you place the subject in one of these positions, the sensation usually diminishes. If you photograph the car looking at one of the edges of the frame, heading straight into it, it gives them a constricted feeling. However, if you put the car in the other third, it has a lot more space to breathe. But your car does not always have to be fully represented in a single photo. There are three framings that are extremely useful in photography, wide, medium, medium and narrow. When beginners take pictures of cars, they usually use the medium framing, showing the entire car and nothing else. And that resembles other photos of beginners, which contributes to the photo not looking that nice. Instead, try using broad or detailed framing, which looks like this. The narrow focus is one that shows some part or curve in the car that is interesting, but is not well represented in a photo of the whole vehicle. Here, it is usually interesting to use bokeh, which is a blurry background. The wide frame choice is the one that captures a landscape and the car takes a small portion of the image, but it is part of the scene telling a story. For example, this one likes to take his car for a drive on Sunday mornings. In these two approaches, you cannot forget the rule of thirds and margins. I also usually put an escape zone for the eyes, something more distant or in another plane. In the broad photos, it is interesting to make the car point towards the landscape as if you were enjoying it too. So, if the person looks at the car, their eyes will be guided to the landscape next. Now that we've worked on the landscape, it's time to put the landscape to work for us. Pictures of car sales are usually taken during the day, in the sunlight, which is the time that we see most. I don't like that. I prefer to capture the rarest moments because that way the photo is instantly more interesting. These moments vary from sunrise and sunset, which are the golden hours because both your car and the environment have a golden ambience and you can capture those incredible reflections to even during the rain, under a rainbow, alongside nature or even at night. But if you want to take pictures during the day, no problem. You can take a photo from under a tree, which adds some reflection to the car paint to make the frame look better. Another cool place is in the shade between the buildings, but my favorite is in the middle of a forest. In these cases, the car looks much more polished and shiny. Sometimes we're just not feeling creative enough to choose a good angle. Not anymore. The walk-around technique is exactly what it sounds like. You circle the car from two different angles and try to find something interesting. In the medium framing, or the one with the entire car in the photo, you pay attention to two things. If the car looks beautiful from that angle, and if the background has any element that draws attention. When you find one, just shoot it. From the narrow perspective, you go around the car while looking for a detail that catches the eye. 
It can be the brand logo, a design expression, or even the rear lights of a McLaren P1. Now, it's not because it's dark that you can't take good pictures. Lights are a very important concept in photography, as we already saw in the sunrise rule. The night may be dark, but it actually opens up possibilities that we didn't have before. Now the headlights are on and the city is completely different. Take advantage of this and explore scenes where the subject is no longer the car, but the lights. Focus on headlights, taillights, street lighting, traffic lights, facades or even better. I love capturing the city lights out of focus in the background. Certainly a beauty. To achieve these results, you need to know how to use your camera in manual mode, mobile phone with a manual camera app, or control the sliders in camera mode in Forza Horizon 4. And that is exactly what I explain in the next video. If it's available, it should be appearing in the upper left corner. But if not, take a look at one of these other videos or subscribe to Racing Legends so you don't miss it next week. I make videos of real projects, driving tips, how to tune your car, and even money tips in Forza Horizon 4.